in your mind, there's, 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 not a, there's not a big difference between the new record and, and first album. Now, I think that we may have been able to refine our music writing abilities to perhaps uh, more genuinely reflect uh, a truer sense of our honest emotion. A lot of our earlier work was chronicles of uh, Texana and, and events that were, I guess, of substance for the guy living in Texas mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. certainly things that you experience when you're coming up there. But our appeal has broadened so much because we've just gotten honest and started really singing about things that uh, were not so regional. Yeah, a lot, well, you know, that most people can uh, identify with or at least understand, you know, or they have the same feelings, you know, I mean, you could you could be in Dallas or uh, mm -hmm. Wisconsin and you still go through certain things, you know, and right. then, or uh, Vienna, probably, I don't know, sure. you know, uh, where they make the sausage there. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, so what you're saying is then, because the emotion is a little more honest, that has broadened the appeal. Don't you think the song has gotten better? We've learned, we've learned how like to express said, it better, I mean, too, you, maybe. That's, that's what you were mentioning. Yeah. Um, I know that that when uh, we first started, Dusty's playing uh, an A bass line against an E chord uh, would spark a certain thing because we were compelled to capture everything. You know, now we've relaxed to the point where uh, Dusty's A against an E chord is like, oh, so you want to do that, and it's actually <coughs> making us play better. Hmm. Hmm. We're, of course, we're in it for the music. That's the bottom line here. Is it still the music? I mean, I know it is, but I mean, it's, it's gotten yeah. so big. Yeah. Well, well for... <coughs> but, but see, the point is that once we, once we play it, there's still just three of us up there playing it. It's true. However many people are listening to it, it changes. I suppose I'm talking but about you know, know, I mean, more of the records, I guess I'm talking about than that. Yeah. Well, the, the, the records, uh, I think, if anything, we've become a little bit more relaxed, or, or li maybe not more relaxed, but more uh, comfortable in the studio to where we, it's not quite so intimidating. You mean to you? you? Know, to me, personally, yeah. Uh, the first records were a little intimidating? No, the very first one wasn't at all. We were in there just a few months, and I was just, okay. You know, but then, uh, then it, it, you know, the studio and dealing with the studio, something that I, I, was not uh, familiar with, you know. Every time, every trip to the studio, it helped out, mm -hmm. you know. I think it helped Saul, but it helped me a lot, you know. Billy always seemed to deal with it better than me, but, uh, and the better off you are, I think the better stuff you come out with. But it, it wasn't the pressure of how popular we were getting it, it's just the, uh, you know, getting it across. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know? I mean, on the back of the first record, they call it Abstract Blues. Is it still Abstract oh. Blues, Billy? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember reading that. We didn't see the record until it was in the store. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so we didn't know. Oh, yeah. And we go, hey, all right, we're Abstract Blues. Oh, man. <laughs> I think that was Ham. <laughs> it wasn't me. Yeah, it wasn't me. Um... Well, if you want to talk about ZZ and you want to talk about blues, I would imagine that there are enough people that could point to a certain lick from uh, any one of our records and say, hey, that's blues. But you uh, could say it's blues in the, in the purest form. So I guess it, maybe it would be abstract. It'd be yeah. blues in the ZZ form. Well, you know, what is the purest form? You know, it depends on if people listen to... Uh, to the real old blues guys, or right. they listen to uh, Chicago '50s. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, you know, it, it depends on who's saying it. You know, right. how abstract, it, how blues it is. Could Could you talk a bit about those differences? Can you talk a bit about 
the difference between Chicago blues and Texas blues, and even Georgia blues. You know, Skinner and, and 38 Special is different than what you guys do. I mean, where? How would you put that in perspective? Um, I could sum it up in terms of what might be appreciable for a reader in the 80s is that the wave of blues that we en enjoyed, uh, not only being a part of, but first of all being influenced by, basically was uh, ushered in by the English guys, the Stones, Clapton, Beck, um, which is uh, kind of what got us to thinking, hey, we can hot rod this stuff and make it really fun hmm. to play. Hmm. Um, I think for ZZ Top, now, hell, Dusty had played with Freddie King, Lightning Hopkins, Jimmy Reed. Uh, we'd all had our taste of, yeah, yeah, of yeah. blues. Yeah, but like Billy's saying, I think, you know, and, and we all loved it, you know, I mean, I loved playing with those guys, but, uh, like he was saying, hot rodding it, or I, I, however you put it, mm -hmm. putting it in the form of, you know, three young white guys, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and to maybe not update it, but, but, you know, when the English guys started doing it, they did it a bit different, right. and it had some more, some some uh, different type, not more, but a different type of appeal. And you it gave me a resurge, you know, of a, huh? You extra carburetor. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Louder. <laughs> Drank a lot of it too. So, so Cream and and those bands wasn't influenced on what ZZ Top did. I would say so. Yeah, I definitely say so. Um, a lot of those guys, a lot of them. You, know. you wouldn't have thought of saying it ten years ago. When no, I, that, that's that's what surprises me a little. <coughs> but um, I think we're on safer ground to say, yeah, we were aware of it. A lot of guys. Th there was even a time in the early seventies when. The real purists were refusing to acknowledge the contribution. Yeah, yeah. That, that they were making, and uh, which is a little unfair because mm -hmm. uh, they brought it to a whole lot of people that never would have heard it. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids uh, listened to a lot of the, for instance, the Cream. A lot of tunes, and they thought, you know, they just assumed they wrote it. If they didn't, <laughs> they wrote blues tunes, you know. But these kids may have never heard that type of thing that wouldn't present in that format. You know, and so you can't deny that. Yeah. yeah. Was ZZ Top always a trio in your mind? Was it always going to be a trio? <coughs> in Billy's mind, it's a single. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. No, 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 no. <laughs> that, well, we uh, only entertained a keyboard player one time. Really? Lasted for about three tunes. <laughs> and that was like, oh. In the garage. In the garage. The early days. Well, 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 we. How long have we been playing together? Sixteen years. Yeah. No, no, at that time. No. Oh. Six months. But it was long enough to where we were already real comfortable, you know, just taking off on something. Uh, and, and and you know, bless his heart, I, I think it probably would have to anybody, but he just didn't mesh. Right. You know, and it was kind of like, well, look. You, just drop out, man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know? Lay out on this one. I laid out on the last one. <laughs> well, lay out on this one. Too. What was his name, Billy? Remember? I can't even remember. I mean, I do not remember. You we, know, we owe it to him here. I know it. I, I I really don't remember his name. Yeah, it's funny talking about that Van Halen comparison again. Same exact thing happened. No. Yeah, I'm sure. They had a keyboard player for quite a while. We, I mean, obviously, way before they were signed. But there were several incarnations of Edward and Alex and keyboard players coming in and out. Whoa. And Ed's style just developed where it just, it just got in the way. Yeah. yeah. We found it fun to work as a trio because it does make you work harder. And, you know, uh, there's hardly a feeling as, as gratifying as to really bashing on the instrument. <laughs> and to get it to work right, to fill up the holes that are presented with the uh, format of you just go, man, let me tear this thing up. <laughs> it really gets to be fun. Did it come from uh, touring with Hendrix? Well, the uh, Sidewalks was four-piece with a keyboard player. But 
or the, seeing the what realization, he, seeing yeah. what he was able to do with it, yeah, was great. The sidewalks functioned as a trio shortly thereafter because uh, the keyboard player was drafted. <laughs> and that's what that does. Yeah. I mean, not the draft, but you know, American Blues was a four piece, occasionally five piece. Then it was the really remainder until it broke up was three piece. That's right. That's right. I had to, American Blues is about you and uh, Frank Renner? Yeah. And thought about that. Wasn't the picture taken at the uh, Dallas Music Hall a trio? Yeah, the trio, then. Yeah, we yeah. Had <laughs> the Amoeba on the back. Yeah. That was with the, uh, the animals. I think y'all play with the animals. Yeah, the animals? Yeah. The English animals? Yeah, really. Well, we're on the same show. We're, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Eric Burton. Hmm. So then the first tunes you were writing were trio kind of format tunes then? From the time we got together, it was uh, on Frank's suggestion that we invite Dusty to participate in a matinee of bass players. <laughs> and I don't know if any one of them had more than 15 minutes worth of statements to be made. and then. When Dusty uh, strapped up, it was three hours on a shuffle. Really? Yeah, it was, it was a long shuffle. So there was no kind of but denying see, thing, the, Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, though, you know, that Frank and I had played together for a few years and uh, playing behind another guitar player uh, who would jam, you know what I mean? Not an arranged thing. We were used to little coming at our corners at the same time. So we were pretty comfortable yeah. with each other. We hadn't played together for a while, but... So, uh, <clears throat> to be fair, you know, that, you know, Frank and I had, were already comfortable with each other. So maybe that's why Billy felt better. You know, there was more of a foundation to lay on. Mm -hmm. I had never really placed that much value uh, in the weight of having um, the benefit of work with somebody before mm. and, and Frank's comment was you're going to love this guy we work great together and uh, at that point we were just two hell we could work great with anybody <laughs> would it, anything would have been <laughs> yeah. Here, yeah and uh, Simon Garman yeah Charles <laughs> and Lee Guitar but there was really a certain kind of chemistry that was. reared its reared its <laughs> yeah, yeah right. <laughs> Has the approach to trio playing changed with, the, I'd say, the last couple records, maybe? Bringing in more keyboards, more sequence parts? Indeed. The, the approach to the playing has, has changed, like the kind of guitar parts? Yeah. With the ushering in of the kind of technology that the 80s was promising to present, and with the uh, kind of creative inventiveness that the uh, techno-pop bands from England were making, uh, they were massaging this hardware into doing, <coughs> made it pretty interesting proposition. Hey, can a uh, down and dirty blues band ever make sounds with this stuff that will work? Um, we tried it. Of course, it was it was a, a mild uh, lean on uh, synthesizers uh, compared to what we've been able to do with Afterburner. Uh, it was mild compared to what Van Halen was able to do with Jump. But all of a sudden, uh, here you've got a second generation wave of synthesizers that offer the kind of uh, manipulation where a more human touch can be put into it mm -hmm. to make it viable for the ZZ Top style <laughs> band to not lose their integrity and still have a, you know. Yeah, and you know, to, to really, really, a really simplistic way of comparison, you know, it's like uh, back in the, before me, I'm not that old, but back in <coughs> rockabilly and all that in its early thing, they would use a drummer, you know, like a, they didn't use a drummer on the Grand Ole Opry for how long? Oh, yeah. Or, I mean, but, I mean, you know, which is real simplistic, but, uh, you know, you won't use, it sounds silly now to 
to those guys at Wooden Silly, mm -hmm. and they played the same, but the addition of drums or uh, electric guitar, electric bass, not an upright bass. You know, these things are, well, sure, you know, but at the time, I would think that those guys, there, there'd be people that go, no, it'll change everything, and you won't be playing, you know, right. with the same feeling, which right. is bullshit, mm -hmm. you know. You know, so, I, yeah, that's real simple uh, out of comparison, yeah, but, but you know, doesn't, doesn't it seem, you know, the difference in the years and the, the technology, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a tool to be to be used, and whatever we play is going to sound like this band, you know. Anyway, looking <laughs> looking hindsight is is obviously it, it it did and it does, but there may have been moments thinking. I mean, looking at it, you know, looking at, at Eliminator and saying, you you know what I mean? I mean, there were moments. <clears throat> um, they they weren't. Um, very many of them mm -hmm. at our rehearsal sessions uh, that left us quaking in our boots because we were biting at the bit to use really? anything we could. But um, I think Ham had a couple of raised eyebrows. <laughs> well, we, we knew that there'd be some people that say, oh, well, okay, you've blown off all, all the people that dig in the style you're playing and you're just trying to, you know, go this new route. But, you know, we did and there wasn't that many, but we knew there'd be a few, but because it's just not true. But uh, and as it turned out, it wasn't true. What it, we held the same people, and we added right, more. Right. Was was I guess before we lose this? Yeah. I, I know you've heard a lot of this before, and, and I, I like that analogy. Back well, yeah. drums to rockabilly yeah. could be what synthesizes the art of blues band today, but but. Um, they tried it, got away with it. We tried it, got well, away with it. With it yeah. I'm, I'm curious what might be the next, oh, well, you can't do that thing. What instrument, I mean, what? Like a, a, a tuba in a heavy metal band. <laughs> yeah, you know, there have been a lot of things that tried to just don't work. Right. You know, but, you know, the electric, the rec rail or the electric razor, I mean, uh, didn't take off and catch on, did it? I mean, <laughs> I was but, getting uh, out there. That was getting way on out there. Was Eliminated the first album you used since on? I, I, I thought I heard a little synth on uh, um, El Loco. There was. There was a little Farfisa sounding thing. Ten Foot Paul had some, oh, I think. Yeah, some weird things. And I thought it was guitar, I couldn't tell, but that was a. Uh huh, like on Ten Foot Paul. Yeah. Mode bass line there. Was uh, it? Was there. Uh, was it Go Back Farther Than That? Guguelo. Cheap sunglasses had a little. Really? Look, no. Billy really didn't really use the, the guitar on the lead. It was uh, out <laughs> yeah, there. Right. <laughs> that kind of job. Yeah. So there were there were hints. Yeah, and we, we, we don't normally just jump right into something. I mean. Of course, you know, some great disasters have occurred when um, discretion was not exercised. And fortunately, uh, our producer was uh, functioning as kind of a uh, an objective viewer who wasn't caught up with, hey, look what I can do. I finally made this machine work. Right. Uh, he was more of a, okay, you've made it work. Can you make it work with the band? Right. 